Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Julius. I am the Head of Business Excellence for Rapport. After the COVID-19 pandemic forced a lockdown in the UK, we all quickly realised that technology will have a greater part to play when we return to our buildings and offices. Today, I am joined by a panel of technology and guest service experts to answer the question on how to get employees and visitors back into the workplace safely using technology to enhance the experience. I would now like to invite each panelist to introduce themselves. And uh, Greg, would you like to go ahead, please? Thanks, Julius. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Mace, the founder and MD of Rapport Guest Services. Uh, my early career was in five star hotels before I moved into facilities management. And for the last 16 years in the corporate front of house world where I launched first Portico and then about eight years ago, Rapport. Thank you. Simon, would you like to go ahead next? Thank you, Julius. Good afternoon. Uh, my name's Simon Cohen. Uh, I'm the partner director in the UK for Condeco. Uh, for those of you who don't, who don't know us, Condeco are uh, a software company involved in uh, workplace scheduling technology, effectively helping uh, people and buildings become more efficient. Uh, I've been in the business about 11 years, uh, seen an awful lot of changes through that time and you know, looking forward to sharing some of those stories and, uh, and in particular how things have changed dramatically in the last few months. Thank you, Simon. And uh, finally, Andy. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Julius. Um, I'm Andy Weeks. I'm Business Development Director for VPod. Um, I'm responsible for developing awareness um, and our proposition. I work very closely with a number of our end customers um, and also particularly um, with our partner base, so the likes of Rapport and um, Condeco. And here we basically believe that the best experience is achieved when you combine people and technology together. Um, and our solutions, our technology solutions drive efficiencies um, to make the best use of people. Thank you very much. So I have asked uh, each of our panelists to kind of kick off today's discussion with a brief introduction to their businesses. And if I can ask Greg uh, to please start with rapport. Thanks, Julius. Um, so, I mean, a, a quick potted history. Rapport provides a, a whole range of guest services from reception, uh, concierge services, uh, through to managing our client meeting room suites and event space, things like switchboard, help desk, room reservations, through to providing community managers or, or floor managers to support our, our clients' own employees. We launched the business in the UK back in 2012, and over the next few years, we expanded our operation to Ireland, Hong Kong, and the US on the, on the back of our existing clients uh, supporting us to do so. Uh, and we're seeing very strong growth, particularly in the US now. Uh, most recently, 2019, we launched in Denmark and Switzerland. Uh, and this international reach enables us to offer clients across different continents a really joined up service. The client base is quite diverse uh, from traditional banks, uh, law firms, insurance companies through to advertising and tech companies, and then a lot of high profile multi tenanted portfolios. Um, and most recently, even into the flexible office space as our clients take on the challenge of WeWork and the like, we're there to support them. And although this afternoon's focus is, is very much on technology, we are a people centric business and, and this underpins our whole ethos and the way that we engage our teams. Thank you, Greg. Simon, would you like to go ahead, please? Thanks, Julius. Um, so uh, hopefully my slide is going to come up in a second, but that we will. Uh, there we go. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Uh, a bit about us, we're, uh, we're a, a UK business with a global footprint uh, with about 1500 customers uh, around the world. We focus, as I mentioned before, on helping people and, and buildings become more efficient uh, in terms of the, 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 the scheduling and the finding of space, whether that's rooms or desks. Uh, and um, over the last uh, well, over the last 15 years, we've seen uh, uh, some changes in the way that office space is being used um, and trends towards flexible working uh, and using technology to uh, to help make 
real estate more efficient uh, and to um, uh, and to help a little bit of self-service as well around uh, how we use that space. Uh, and um, uh, actually what we've seen is in the last few months uh, that being those trends being greatly uh, accelerated uh, with some actually some new challenges uh, around returning to the office that um, that we hadn't really seen before and hadn't really um, uh, hadn't really thought about. Uh, and these will all be familiar to you. I'm sure that you're going through all of these these questions at the moment um, in terms of uh, implementing social distancing. How's that going to work with the, within the office? Um, how do you manage overcrowding? Um, how do you know if the, if the space is being has been used or not? Because we need to work on sanitization of that space. Um, and um, and actually, what steps? Um, do we take um, or can we take if we if we find that someone's tested positive uh, within the virus? And these are some of the uh, the challenges, the newer challenges that we've been helping our customers to solve. Things are things are moving uh, quite quickly, and and when they settle down, we'll hit a a new normal. Um, and and I hate the phrase new normal; it's hugely overused. And if anyone has a better way of describing what the future will look like, please tell me. But um, ultimately, when things settle um, uh, and the virus is gone or nearly gone, we'll be back in the office, um, and we're going to see some changes within there uh, in terms of uh, you know a, a rise in flexible working and less space within there. People will come into the office um, when they have a reason to. Um, and that will be for, for, for collaboration or client meetings with visitors coming to see them, possibly meetings with suppliers and partners uh, and colleagues as well. Ultimately, employees and visitors are going to make their own decisions on whether they travel into the uh, into the office or not, um, and so need to have that information communicated to them. Um, because if they if they don't feel safe and comfortable coming into the office, they won't come into the office. Um, ultimately, workspace reservation is a, is an important part of this. Effectively, a pre-registration uh, of employee or visitor uh, when they're coming into the office, so that uh, so that you know who's coming. Um, and um, and this leads us into the, uh, the the front of house experience and how you know technology and people can help to create that uh, that better, more efficient experience. Um, ultimately, um, there we go. Uh, so um, ultimately, the technology. Um, uh, if implemented correctly, can flow between um, between applications, and we'll, we'll, part of that is uh, is around the flow of information. Say, for example, between Condeco and VPods technology, so that you get this seamless experience uh, for the visitor and for the employee. The other thing that's quite important and, uh, is that visitors are and employees are, are expected, not unexpected. We talk about avoiding overcrowding. We want to know who's coming in, and the technology can help us to uh, to do that. Um, ultimately, technology is going to help with a better flow of people through the reception area to avoid those uh, overcrowding. We'll talk a bit more about that later as well. Um, and um, and then I think what, what you're going to hear about is a bit more about our technology and VPod and Andy's going to talk to you next in a second. But ultimately, the Condeco technology is helping you plan ahead uh, before you come into the office. And the VPod technology uh, is effect is helping manage the people once they're in the office and ensuring they get through the uh, through the lobby through the reception effectively. And I don't want to steal your thunder. You can take it from there. <laughs> Many thanks, Simon. Um, I'm just going to share my screen that I have here for you. Hopefully everybody can see that now. Um, so I'm going to focus on on, on the Vigri. Um, this this is basically um, a solution that we've developed over the last 10 years and it's been it's it's been an interesting development. It Vigri automates the entire visitor process. Um, so when I say visitors as well, I'm referring to not just the, the visitors and guests that we receive, but employees, contractors, you know, maybe even the couriers that step into the reception areas. It's about looking at what they need and we'd, we've designed um, the whole solution um, to get people to the building in and out of the buildings as efficiently uh, as possible, whilst providing them with the additional services they need, um, the, the additional information that they might require when they're there um, <clears throat> within the building, and, and then again beyond, you know, after the meeting, after they've been there for their, 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 their visit. So basically, we're looking at trying to enhance the whole visitor experience, improve the processes, and, and do this whilst delivering a return on investment for the VGreet. So what you can see there is, um, you know, it is a reception area. The VGreet is effectively a giant smartphone on steroids. Um, it takes that form for a reason. We're trying to create something that's intuitive to use for the end users. You know, we've all had smartphones in our pocket for a number of years, <coughs> so we know how to interact with it. 
Um, the idea behind the, the VGreet as well is to take that kind of smartphone approach in that, you know, we have behind us a number of tools in the toolkit or Lego bricks, if you like, that we can add in to the features and, and some of the, 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 the solutions that VGreet can offer. So with that comes things like the integration with Condeco, um, like the integration with certain other visitor management solutions. And basically we can build um, within the interface everything we need to create those seamless journeys and give everybody the information that they need and just do it in the most efficient way. So why, why did we start creating VGreet in the first place? This, this picture I think sums up what one of the issues has been you know, before COVID as well. Um, what we were seeing was um, queues building up, you know, bottlenecks, um, receptionists struggling perhaps at peak times. Um, so we need to start look, we still need to start looking at how we can control those visitors and get them in and out as efficiently as possible. Um, and especially um, now with the COVID um, scenario where we need to look at um, controlling social distancing, for example. You know, at some point as we go back to the offices, we're going to be talking about hundreds of people trying to get in and out of the office um, and we need to control that, that whole scenario. As I've mentioned, um, you know, th this is a kind of smartphone approach. Um, so originally VGreet was designed to be a touch screen, it still is, but looking forward now and uh, what we've developed in the background is a way of making VGreet contactless. So this is one of the big conversations going on at the moment about how do we make that experience um, contactless and still give um, you know, an easy effective solution. One of the things we've done is now make the VGreet voice activated. Um, so it will listen for certain commands. You can answer questions that the VGreet's asking you as well. Simple yes or no's or at the simple, you know, the, the, the simple scenario of basically I need some help. The moment you say the word help, you would be connected via video to perhaps one of Rapport's um, well-trained staff who can help you remotely via video um, and they would have access to the peripheral devices um, surrounding the VGreet as well. So part of this whole contactless thing was making it, um, uh, you know, you didn't need to interact as much with the VGreet by touching it. So again, when you activate the, the VGreet to do your check-in, you could just say the word check-in, for example, and it would know then what you're there for. It would then start triggering a process. Now, one of the screening um, uh, scenarios that we've built into this is integrating a thermal camera. So there are a number of options. Um, the high end version is by looking at a um, thermal imaging camera that um, is medical grade that will be looking at the core temperature by reading the temperature within your eye ducts. You can take other options as well, um, which could be an infrared um, thermal imaging camera. Um, not quite as accurate, not quite as medical grade, but more cost effective um, and does a very similar job. And part of that screening process, I believe, is, um, is that it's kind of showing people that you're controlling who's coming into the building so that they actually feel comfortable about the environment they're, they're about to enter into as well. Um, and I think that's quite important. So as Simon uh, mentioned, we're looking at the whole end-to-end -end solution. So, you know, you'll be booking your visitors um, perhaps out of the, the Condeco visitor management part. Um, and we're looking at what we're now doing with those, those visitors before they've even left the starting point. So that could be their house, it could be their office. Um, and basically we're giving them all the information that they need. So, you know, the typical, uh, who am I going to meet, at what time, where's the address, but also the contact information for the host. So how you can contact them in case you're running late, for example. Um, we're giving you directions as well with our wayfinding um, solution. It also integrates with the um, Google wayfinding solution, um, Google Maps, which means we can show you how long it's going to take to get from your star point to that, um, that particular reception area. Um, it's going to show you the options you've got in terms of public transport, etc. So again, creating a, a, a nice start to the whole journey before you've even arrived at that particular location. We can also embed into it certain other information to prepare visitors before they come. Now that could be that they need to sign a health and safety um, document to, uh, to say they've understood the terms and conditions of where they're going, depending on the location. It could be just pre, pre, pre reminding, me, you know, reminding them that they need to bring with them photo ID. So again, that's building inefficiencies for when they arrive at the location because they could have pre-registered those, those, those bits of information as well. So again, making it a little bit, little less frictionless when they arrive and speeding up the process of getting people into the building. All of this, when you arrive, means that you don't have to touch the screen. 
You'll be asked for your QR code, which will just simply get out and hold next to the QR code reader. The vGrid will show you exactly where you need to do that. And it would then trigger the process for you. It would do everything automatically and literally within a few seconds, the QR code's been read. You've had your temperature checked. Um, we've confirmed who you are. You've perhaps answered a few screening questions like, you know, have you been to any of these countries in the last 14 days? If any of the triggers um, are then set off in terms of a potential risk, basically what we do is in the background, a discreet message would be sent to a key member of staff and they can then, you know, that would be a trained person, um, somebody within the reception area that would know how to deal with the situation. You know, we're not going to create any more anxiety and, and stress. There's already enough of that around at the moment and we're not going to start putting bells and, and alarms and red flashing lights. It's it's a discreet process to make sure that we, we deal and, and, and screen those visitors correctly before making another decision as to whether to let them in. Um, as soon as that's done, um, your host has been notified, as I've mentioned, and everything's taken care of. You'll be given instructions on the screen on what you need to do next. And at that point, we can then connect to other peripheral devices like, um, you know, badge printers, etc. And basically out pops your visit badge for you to use that day. And that could have a QR code. It could have an RFID card um, embedded into it that you can then use for the building entry system, for example. Key to being able to do all of this and some of the benefits um, in terms of the seamless journeys is, is our integration with, um, with Condeco. Simon's going to talk a bit, a, a bit more about this in a moment as well. But basically, it means that our solution in terms of you arriving to a particular location would know who you are and we, get, we then have an idea on what you're there for because the systems are talking to each other. And what we're going to find here is that, that the system can actually help you in terms of getting you to your meeting room or getting you to the desk that you've booked or approving you to go through to the building now that we know that you do have a desk booked so that we can you know, help control that density monitoring as well in terms of how many people are in the building and who's in the building. As you've done all of your check-in process, um, the wayfinding solution kicks in and you will basically be shown where you are currently um, and you'll be given the wayfinding instructions dynamically to show you how to get to your desk or your meeting room um, or where you need to go and wait to be greeted by the host. We can put up other information like, um, you know, points of interest on the way. That could be the washroom. Uh, it might be simply where to get a, a coffee before you actually get to that meeting room as well. And as I've mentioned, this, this is quite an important um, feature for us um, with, with the VGRI. Um, keeping your distance. So we're looking at um, you know, protecting the frontline staff. So there's a video feature built in, as I've mentioned. Any point you say uh, the word help, you're connected to a real life person and that person could be anywhere. They could be sat in a back office on a different floor in a completely different location, which means the likes of Rapport get to offer a slightly different service where they centralize that resource, whether we're from a call center type model or whether we take that, you know, with with the lockdown that, that those those individuals might have to work from home, depending on where they're based, etc. The agent you're speaking to the other side can also access the peripheral devices that we've connected to the VGREET. So that could be door opening, that could be the printer, um, it could be the QR code scanner, and basically they can access the visitor management, the room booking, et cetera, and they can help you with the issue that you might have. You know, a lot of people are, are quite happy to self-serve. Some people get some way down the process and then need what we call self-assist. They've got a certain way down the process and they're now looking for a bit of assistance. Um, or some people just want to be helped right from the very beginning. So they can just say the word help and up props a friendly face that can that can treat you in the right way and, and give you the help that you that you require. Other solutions we can build into this as well, link it to um, tracking cameras so we can um, support the front of uh, front of house teams with camera tracking to monitor uh, people counting, monitor the footfall, um, look at managing capacity and densities to know if the queues are building up or if we're about to hit um, a point where social distancing will be impossible to maintain. Um, those triggers again are sent via a discrete email so that then they, they can make a choice on perhaps what the next steps are um, and see what they can do to help with perhaps some of the queues that might be building or or deal with issues that need looking at at that particular point. 
VGreet comes with certain other solutions built in as well. So, you know, perhaps local information, emergency procedures, health and safety information, um, and you can even use it as a communications tool, which we'll come on to a bit later on. We can take feeds from um, local travel information so that you can check the status on the tubes before you leave the building, for example, or just check where the nearest um, hotel is or where the nearest station is and check the train leaving times from those particular stations. But we can take digital feeds from any Anywhere the way we, where, where that information is going to be useful, and we can build that into the the interface on the VGreet. So that's it as quickly as I can sum it up. Really, there's a lot more to it, but the idea behind it is, is simply that it's great visitor experiences, um, which are now becoming even more more important as the, it gets more complex as we go back to the offices with with the post pandemic um, environment. Well, thanks, Andy. That's uh, that's some that's a really good overview of of the three businesses and. Um, so let, let's start with the question. So I've got a question for all three speakers and um, it is against the backdrop of a, of a dangerous virus, can we really keep people safe and provide a great experience for visitors? Um, Greg, can we can we start with you, please? Yeah, thanks, Julius. I mean, look, I obviously think the answer to that is, is definitely yes, uh, but it, it just needs thinking about it in a different way. So aside from the things that you'd expect, such as perspex screens on the reception desks or, or sanitizer, uh, floor markers and so forth to support social distancing, I think it's really important to look at other things as well. Uh, and our experiences of getting staff back into our client buildings over the last few weeks has shown us that providing a, a really reassuring presence on arrival is incredibly important. Um, our teams are also performing different roles, so they're no longer just checking people in behind a reception desk, but rather they're, they're out front, they're greeting people as they arrive at the front door. And they're also managing things like the lift lobbies, sometimes with you know, enhanced hours, you know, going right into the evening. Um, and, and this is so that we can ensure the flow into the lift lobbies and places like that is appropriate. Um, and, and also, I guess, so that the staff that are the early returners can have confidence in the measures that have been put in place. Uh, and I think that elements like this actually really enhance the experience that, that people are having. Um, and, and I think the other thing is we, we've spent a lot of time during lockdown preparing our own teams for reopening. And, and a big part of this is around staff training and giving our teams the skills to deal with the new challenges that they're going to face. Um, and of course, as we are discussing this afternoon, uh, utilising the latest technology is, is going to be a, a hugely important part of that. Yeah, thank you. Andy, do you want to do you want to go ahead next, please? Yeah, I mean, you know, completely agree with Greg, um, you know, absolutely. Um, our, our technology is in design, has been designed to enhance the, the visitor experience so we can improve um, the way we're dealing with um, the number of visitors, the number of employees coming back into the workplace. Um, we were doing this long before COVID. Um, we'll continue to do it long after COVID. And basically all we've done here is, is add in some additional features using the technology available with the processes we've already put in place to ensure um, that those, those measures are there, that people can come back in safely, that, that you can automate those processes, freeing up um, the other members of staff to be able to take care of certain other issues, as we mentioned, like, you know, monitoring the, um, the lift lobby, for example, as well. So, you know, I believe you absolutely are going to have to implement certain technologies and automate certain parts of the process with the technology to ensure that we can continue to offer that great service and um, streamline the process. Yeah. Interesting. Well, what, what, what are your thoughts, Simon? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it's already been said. I mean, certainly, uh, as Greg said, the answer is yes. You know, we can we can do both. Um, technology has been uh, has been improving the the experience within the office for quite some time. What's changed is that um, things have suddenly become more more, more complex, and actually, the, the the consequences of not getting things right have um, have become greater. Uh, and so, um, so it's important that we that we can kind of marry these two together in, in improving uh, the uh, improving the safety, which is an absolute necessity, but um, uh, but also at the same time, you know, improving that improving that visitor experience, not just standing still. Uh, uh, my opinion is that is that is that technology the technology industry in general has stepped up. Companies like Kindeco and Bpod have created some you know some great experiences that don't um, uh, that aren't a hassle, that aren't a pain. They feel very natural, um, and so yeah, absolutely, the answer is yes. We uh, we can achieve this. 
Thank you, Simon. And um, you talk about guest experiences and getting things right and things like that, but it, it is slightly different now. So what are the you know common challenges in reception areas right now? If, if, if I can ask you to start again, please, Greg. Yeah, look, I mean, I think there are a number of key challenges facing us. Um, firstly, and, and very importantly, there is the safeguarding of our own team and ensuring that they're in the right mindset to be back at work. And so we focus a lot on, on positive mental health training uh, and also being able to effectively respond to any new situations that they may be faced with. At the moment, obviously, a large proportion of our teams are in furlough. And so regularly communicating with them and, and keeping people positive and motivated to return has been a priority. And then there's a, there's a fact that we're asking our teams to do a number of different tasks that were not part of the job description before. So, for example, taking temperatures of people arriving or, or managing how many people are entering the lifts and so on. Uh, and agreeing all of these new protocols with our clients has been very important. And then you know, we mentioned it earlier around ensuring that our clients' lobbies are safe. Um, you know, not everybody has a huge uh, Canary Wharf style lobby. And so ensuring that the reception lobbies and the lift lobbies don't become overcrowded if people arrive at the same time is going to be increasingly important as more and more staff start to return to the workplace. Thank you. So, Simon, what do you think about you know, common challenges at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as Greg finished off on talking about congestion in the in the reception and lobby area. For me, that's the that's the biggest challenge and potentially the biggest worry. Um, if there is overcrowding in that space because too many people have arrived or people have all arrived at the same time, um, that can lead to lead to problems. Certainly, social distancing becomes almost impossible. Uh, and so, um, so I think those two overcrowding and social distancing, I would say, are the uh, are the main ones that our customers are saying. You know, help us uh, help us solve this. Uh, also, hearing around um, you know around sanitisation, I think that one's obvious but ensuring that the uh, the right space is cleaned and, and not everything is deep cleaned because we just need to make sure that we know where people are where they're meeting where they're sitting clean the right space um, and uh, and contact tracing as well about you know understanding who's been uh, who's been working near who thank you and Andy what, what are your thoughts on this yeah um, I, I also think that some of the challenges um, we were facing pre-COVID as well um, you know prolonged waiting times in reception areas um, the reception teams perhaps um, you know having too much to do and not being able to focus on certain other tasks and handle or be able to you know improve on the service that they, they were already you know already doing a great service but you know perhaps they could improve on that further um, and, and deal with people in a, in a slightly different way. Um, I also think one of the major challenges we're looking at at the moment, and it, I'm, I'm certainly seeing it and, and hearing about it, is, is kind of knee-jerk reactions really about the environment itself that we're going to be returning back to. So, you know, customers going, great, let's get some, let's get some thermal, thermal imaging cameras in, you know, plonk it on a stick in reception and, you know, now let's think about how we're going to control that. Um, you know, the, the, the barriers are already being put in place, additional people required in terms of the process. So it's already slowing things down. Um, and what we're doing is actually putting barriers in place. You know, nobody, nobody wants to return back to their, their reception, you know, maybe September or something and suddenly find it looks like, a, you know, a war torn hospital um, from the 1940s with, you know, people in masks, etc. Um, and I think part of what you need to think about is how you're not just going to protect your employees as they come back, but how are you going to make the, the employee and visitor uh, feel comfortable about coming back to that environment? I think if you get it wrong, it could backfire and people will be less inclined to come back in if the experience hasn't been right and they don't feel comfortable to take that next step into the building itself. I think that you know the questions you need to ask yourself is how are you successfully going to screen large number of people at your locations? Um, how are you going to protect the frontline staff? Uh, they're going to have to deal with hundreds of people as they come through the office. Um, you know how are you going to keep up that high level of service and keep it personal at the same time? Um, keep waiting times to a minimum you know queues are going to build up if it's not handled in the right way and again this comes back to that whole you know social distancing and, and decongestion um, you know and again I think communication is key you know how are we going to keep people informed about these changes across uh, at multiple locations as well so I think those questions need thinking about thank you Andy uh, I want to remind everyone that's watching please go ahead and ask your questions in the Q&A section if you would like um,
But, but I'm thinking, uh, you know, does connecting Condeco and VPod and, you know, does that make the experience better? It feels like you, doesn't more tech just make things more complicated? What, Simon, c could you could you answer that, please? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's no denying that there's a lot of complicated technology going on here, but but ultimately uh, the user experience is going to feel quite seamless and that's the most important thing. Um, with our technology in, integrated into the VPod technology and the VGreed, there's a very, very neat, tidy user experience. Um, and so just looking at that, maybe from a, a, a visitor perspective, the uh, the host of a the host of a meeting has uh, has gone into maybe into Condeco, maybe into Outlook, has created a booking, they've put in some catering, they've added some visitors um, and um, they've created this perfect meeting. And um, and the visitor themselves, all they get is a they they get the QR code which gets emailed to them, and they and they arrive in the office and they they place it up against the VGreet. Really, really nice and simple. And they don't know that maybe two or three or maybe more different applications have been involved in that. It's all about the uh, it's all about the user experience. It doesn't really matter how complex the tech itself is, um, as long as they get that great experience, which they can. Thank you, uh, Andy. What what do you think? Yeah, I'm going you know, to completely agree with Simon. That was the, that was the whole point of looking at the integration with um, you know people you know with the likes of Condeco. Really, it's about being able to offer that seamless um, workflow so that you don't even realise half of the technology that's behind it. You know, when 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 you pick up your iPhone in the morning and you start looking at all these different you know productivity um, apps that we're using, etc., and you know your wayfinding and buying your ticket, etc., you're not thinking about the technology and the complex. Um, connectivity that's gone on behind it. You're just pleased that it's been very simple, very easy, and you've moved on and you've you've got on to do what you want to do and be productive during your day. You're, you're moving around, you're getting on with things. So it's not about the the complex bit, the solution behind it. It's what it means when these two things work seamlessly together from from the perspective of a visitor, an employee, contractor, etc. Okay. I mean, you both talk about, you know, connectivity and iPhones and, and a lot of those techno technological bits, but the feedback we are getting is that people are really craving human interaction now. So do we really think that they want to come back into the office and interact further with technology apps and screens rather than uh, seeing, you know, a smiling real life person greeting them? Andy, what, what do you think? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think you're right. You know, I'm I'm definitely craving you know human interaction. I want I want to get back into the office. I want I want to have the you know the bravado. I want to I want to catch up with my friends and my colleagues. Um, you know, I'm sure you know and, and certain projects that we can talk about and be more productive on. Um, the, the, the idea behind the VGreet here is that you know when you when you're going back into the office, we're not replacing people. We're just trying to automate parts of that process to smooth it. Um, so you know we're giving them a helping hand. So the frontline staff can are freed up to do a better, better you know a better service for us. Um, I'm quite happy to just go in, check in, be screened, checked, approved, and walk back into the office. Um, the interaction I'm craving is with my colleagues once I've actually got back into the building. Um, you know. And, and Vigri, uh, if you're talking about that front of front frontline staff scenario, you know it's not a McDonald's kiosk. It's 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 there to add people back into the process. So at any time I can get help from I, uh, you know, perhaps via the video feature and speak to a real life person. Um, you know, and, and there's also other people around me in, in, in the reception area. So if there is a particular issue um, that the VGree can't deal with, there are always other people to speak to, I think. So, you know, it is providing the best experience with technology, but keeping people into the mix as and when needed. Thanks, Andy. Simon, do we want to go ahead? You're on mute, Simon. OK, uh, so ultimately tech is going to help us get back into the office. We are craving that human interaction. Um, and um, uh, but, but actually the, the challenges that we have today and the change in the way that we're working in the future with a lot more people working from home means that um, people need the technology to plan that perfect day. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've got a client coming to the office. I need to find a room and um, they need to be managed well at reception. I need to uh, book half a desk and maybe need some collaboration space. Um, without the technology, you can't um, be sure that you can 
create that day that you need, which gives you the incentive to come into the office. You're not just going to come in. You don't just want to come into the office, get your laptop out and sit by yourself. So so ultimately, yeah, to the, the, we, we want to get back into the office, but but technology is the enabler to, to give us the confidence that we can um, we can have the day that we want to have and collaborate with the right people in the right way. Thank you, and Greg, I'm sure you'll have an interesting view on this as well, please. Look, I mean, I, you know, I agree with everything that Andy and Simon have said. I, I think our job in Rapport is, is really to make sure that we can help those people that do come back to the office have a really enjoyable experience so that they tell their colleagues how great it is to be back. Uh, and I think that that will help us to support our clients to repopulate their buildings. So, uh, you know, that, that really needs to be our focus. OK. Thank you. So, I mean, this this all sounds really good. And I mean, we know that lots of clients are planning to come back to the offices and the buildings in the autumn. So I suppose, is, is there enough time to implement a VGREET and Condeco, etc.? How simple is this to implement and how long does it take, really? Um, Simon, do you want to do you want to start maybe? Uh, yes, so because everything's in the cloud, it's really easy to implement. We're looking at four weeks um, and actually for those offices that are still closed, we don't even need to set foot in the office to be able to uh, to be able to create this. So so yeah, for a uh, uh, to get someone up and running, yeah, please give us a bit more than four weeks, but um, just to be on the safe side. But uh, but yeah, that's all it should take. OK, uh, and Andy, what, what about VGREET? Yeah, um, the same here, you know, v Vigri is an out of the box solution. Um, so a lot of what I've already talked about is already integrated. Um, we typically say it can be deployed within around eight weeks. Um, the only complexity comes when we need to start working with the customers to actually, you know, make sure that we help them define what those workflows are going to look like um, and, and make sure they're in line with their processes and policies. Um, but then, you know, that's what we're there for. We're not just a technology company We're we're looking at creating the right experience. So, we, you know, we've done this a few times now um, and we, we can help create that very quickly. And, and my advice is to, to look at you know, if you're going to start a VPod type journey um, linked with you know, uh, integration with Condeco, etc., we've got the integration. It's already there out the box and consider it and, and look at it in a kind of phased approach. If you really just need it for the screening right now, teach that, you know, let's look at that as phase one. And, and then you can look at phase two. Phase three is then going forward to perhaps some of the more complex issues with other integrations they'd look to to build into the V group. But yeah, typically eight weeks we're up and running with um, you know tried and tested version. OK, um, we've got we've got a question from from Roman, um, one of the one of the viewers, and I, I think I've got a similar question, actually. So this all makes me think that why do we need receptionists at all? Why why don't we just put, you know, a VGREET in technology? In? And I, I'm going to I'm going to direct this question at you, Greg, please. Thanks, Sir Julius. Thanks, Roman. I mean, look, if I was being slightly flippant, I'd say that a Vigri won't know if there's a big queue building up or, or a guest with a guide dog has just arrived. Um, but seriously, we see this technology really as enabling our own teams to be more efficient uh, and able to look after our guests even better. And I think that's the mindset to have. We know that more guests and clients will be anxious. Uh, and so spending a bit more time with them to ensure that they are reassured and well looked after will be more important than ever. Um, and the other thing is our teams have also built relationships over many years with so many stakeholders across our clients organisation. And so the ability to offer a really intuitive service will mean that there will always be a need for our teams alongside technology. Um, and, and, you know, for many of our clients, it's this really personalised service, which is actually part of their USP. I mean, the other thing that we're doing for clients is to look for efficiencies and, and solutions that offer value for money. So let me give you a couple of examples. We're, we're going to be asking our teams to multi-skill uh, so that not only will our reception team greet guests and, and show them to a meeting room, but they can also you know, serve the refreshments, brew the tea and coffee. Uh, they can support AV requests. They can even clean the meeting room after the guests have departed and, and, and the meeting is finished. And another way that we'll be able to use this technology to support our clients is, is, you know, perhaps having a reception team member managing guests in more than one location, uh, particularly if you've got low footfall. So some of the regional offices, perhaps that we look after or some of the quieter London offices. Um, 
and also offering our clients support for extended hours, but from a remote location with, with the VBRIC technology. Um, Andy mentioned it al already earlier, but we're, you know, we're already planning a change to our own head office to support a hub and spoke model, uh, where a small team of our rapport receptionists can provide a personalized, but offsite solution for our clients. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in there as well, Greg, actually, um, if that's all right. Um, you know, completely in agreement with what you say. And, you know, we, we believe here at V Greek that people are absolutely part of the process as, as we keep, you know, reminding everyone via the video or, or the receptionist. So, you know, it's whether it's at the V Greek or somebody stood next to it, ne next to it. The problem has never been the people. Um, a, a lot of the problem has been the processes and the amount of things that those receptionists have had to do that they feel like they have to deal with you quickly and just give you you know what you need or tell you to fill something out because they've got a queue of 10 people behind you um, they're not allowed to you know they're, 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 it's very difficult for them at that point to get up from the reception desk walk come around to see you and perhaps guide you through the building you know you could be a VIP visitor that needs that kind of treatment um, so I think you know I think the VGreek will offer the opportunity to remove the barrier of the front desk and stop receptionists being just head and shoulders behind the desk um, and, and they're kind of sat there waiting for visitors and employees to come to them, they can now do that the other way around. They can be out on the floor and be more more of a concierge type approach and offer you know, a much better service. Be, they've got time to be friendly. They've got time to make offer you a coffee. Um, they, they can do the hand holding and take you up to your meeting room. Um, so it's just gonna, it's just going to free them up and keep them in the process and, and do a much better job, which is what they were originally there to do. Very interesting. So. So how is this this technology aiding communication, which we you know which we all know is really critical at this point in time, and you know with with a pandemic going on? Simon, sorry, you're on mute, Simon. Uh, so obviously communication is critical. That's twice now, um, and um, uh, and um, the key part for us is the is is the mobile app and the part that plays in communication. Uh, just to, just briefly, it's a means to be able to see not just who's in the office and where they're sitting, but actually what spaces are available and they can book, and um, and even if a space is clean or not. Uh, so so it's a really really useful communication tool. It will sh it shows you when there's closures of office space if it needs a, a, a thorough clean. Um, even the the contact tracing information comes through the uh, comes through the mobile app so you do contact tracing how does that work uh, yeah, so um, it's interesting. We've always stored information on, um, you know, who sits where and who meets where and who they meet with. Um, and um, uh, and actually, we felt that was something that we could um, uh, feed back to sort of HR teams within um, uh, within organisations. So if somebody does uh, contract the virus, uh, they're able to see very quickly um, uh, who they've been sitting near, who they've been meeting with, what meeting room they've been in, who else has been in that meeting room, uh, and actually to help, uh, you know, minimise any outbreak within their own office. Office and also support the uh, the NHS uh, processes, the NHS tracing that's uh, that's taking place as well. Some really valuable information there. Uh, that's really interesting, and it, it sounds great. But it, it does lead me to think about GDPR and how my information would be used. What, what, do you have, what have you got on that, Simon? <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair question. Look, we actually haven't changed the information that we're holding and sharing in our system. So so nothing has changed in, in that respect. Um, we're, we're very, very strong on GDPR. We take data very, very seriously. Um, we have uh, our own ISO accreditation for our cloud service and we host in uh, the Azure cloud, which is as secure as it can get. So yeah, absolutely. GDPR and, um, and, and the security of data is, is hugely important. Okay. And Andy, what about the VGreet and my information stored? Yeah, so you know it's very very similar to, to Simon's answer, really. You know, we're we're not storing anything we don't need. This isn't a kind of um, you know big brother type approach where we're you know we're trying to work out how often you go to the to the washroom. Um, it's it's simply storing the data that we need to help us be efficient. Um, you know, get with the right workflows, you know, know who you are, where you're, where you are in the building. You know, we need to know the numbers. It's, it's imperative to know how many people are in the building at any one given point, for example. So, you know, GDPR is a really positive thing, but I think we've got to realist, be realistic as well in terms of, you know, health and safety and security. You know, there is a certain amount of data that needs to be used, but, you know, I think most people are quite happy with the, the what, what we do with their data and we do explain it. Communication is key as well.
Okay, okay, thank you. We, we, we're almost running out of time, but I've got one more question that I would like to ask. And uh, it, it's with things changing so quickly, how, how can I be sure if, if I buy technology today that I will benef benefit from that, you know, years down the line rather than, you know, in the next couple of months? Andy, would you, have you got something for me? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I guess the thing to reiterate here is, you know, Condeco has been around a long time in this space. Um, you know, Vigri has been around for 10 years now. It's not some science project where we've just tried to cobble something together in response to COVID. We were doing this uh, and creating these efficiencies, you know, 10 years ago. So the product will still be around after this. Um, so, you know, whilst you might get some of the tactical benefits that you might need right now for the, the social distancing, um, you know, the temperature taking, the screening features, for example, you might need them now. You might hopefully, and let's let's all pray that we can, you know, we can turn those features off maybe six months a year down the line. Um, but they will still be there if you need them to just switch back on. It's not a product that's going to be stored in a cupboard, um, you know, gathering dust in a few months' time. It's going to offer you those ongoing efficiencies, cost savings, um, you know, and improve the whole experience for your customers, visitors, and employees alike going forward. Um, you know, this isn't a new product. Thanks, Andy. Simon, what about Condeco? Uh, yeah, exactly the same as Andy. I mean, the, the, the trends that have been taking place for the last 10, 15 years in the workplace around, um, you know, using technology to make people and buildings more efficient and to improve uh, the visitor and employee experience, uh, you know, those things haven't gone away. They've only been enhanced. And so uh, so the technology that we have uh, and VPods uh, is going to be around for very many years to come. Greg, I'm going to pass it to you finally, please. Thanks, Julius. I mean, if, if you look what we did uh, when lockdown started, um, the first thing we did is we set up the switchboard and the ability to do all of the core services from our employees' homes. So really the next step is to say, well, if we've got this technology, why can't we do that in the future with the reception teams? You know, why does the receptionist actually need to be in the building itself? So the, you know, I talked about the hub and spoke model earlier, uh, and, and I think that what this is going to do, this this um, you know, this current situation, I think is going to accelerate the adoption of technology. And certainly, all of the conversations that we are having with our clients is to say, how do we build something that will be a long-term solution, utilising technology and, and, and the best of our know-how, so that if we do go into a second wave or a third wave or whatever it may be. You know what we're we're all ready to go for it, um, and, and it it just becomes like uh, you know our switchboard operators not being in the building answering the phone, they're at home answering the phone, and and I think it's as simple as that really. So I think there's a long term uh, benefit to implementing things like this. All right, thank you, Greg. I, I do have one question for Amy. I will reply to that separately, Amy. We don't have time at the moment, but. I think um, this wraps it up quite nicely. Um, I would like to thank all our panelists and everyone that has been watching. Uh, I wish you a continued good day and uh, please do reach out. If we have not managed to answer your questions today, uh, you can see our contact details on screen. Um, I hope everybody has a good of the rest of the day. Thank you very much, everyone.